it's Penny Black and Jill Foster here for your next PB&J card class and today we'll be featuring the MISTI, the most incredible stamping tool invented by My Sweet Petunia along with some new Penny Black stamps. And the technique that I'll be featuring works perfectly with these stamps and the MISTI and it's a watercolor effect using brush stroke stamps. And the stamp that I'm using today is called Flambeau and these stamps are really unique in that they have the great solid brush stroke image for the back background but if you stamp them with just ink on top you can also get beautiful detail so they're kind of like a two-in-one stamp and using the MISTI you're able to access both of the qualities of this stamp so to begin I've got my stamp mounted onto my MISTI and I'm stamping onto hot press watercolor paper and I really prefer the hot press watercolor paper for this technique um, because when I miss the stamp and stamp onto the watercolor paper it seems to really absorb the ink well and things don't bleed too much even if I might apply a little extra water. So I'm coloring onto the stamp using Tombow dual brush pens and I'm just stamping that onto the background and I'm starting with just the leaves here and I'm coloring and doing them one or two at a time and pressing onto the watercolor paper a couple of times just to get um, some of that marker ink down and then I'm going to just take a small paintbrush with water and blend that so this is going to give me that very smooth loose watercolor finish and then I'll go back and add more detail on top stamping on top of that and I will let that dry I'm not going to put my heat gun to that because I don't want to take this out of the MISTI because I'm going to repeatedly stamp on top and the MISTI allows it to align perfectly every single time. So I'll just blend this with some water and then go back once it's dry and do additional stamping. So while I'm waiting for those to dry, and I'm not very patient, <laughs> I um, am also going to get the branch here that connects those and I added a little bit of darker ink right along the very top of the leaves. And this will stamp and blend onto the ink that's already there. So instead of applying the blending and the inking to the paper, you're applying it to the stamp and repeatedly stamping it. And if at any point you want it to have more of a blended look on the page, you can add the water right onto the paper. So here I'm working on the berries and I wanted a nice golden undertone so I'm coloring with yellow onto the berries and then stamping and going in and blending that with just again that small paintbrush and some water. And I'll have all of the exact colors of the Tombow Dual Brush pens listed at the end of the video along with all the supplies that I'm using. I added a little bit darker coloring onto the stamp just in certain portions of the berries and then I'll go back and just blend that out a little bit using the paintbrush with the water. Next I'm going to work on the base of the candle. So I'm just coloring onto that using again a Tombow dual brush pen. And you can easily see on the stamp where the leaves are, where the berries are. Um, so you can really focus in your stamping and building the scene so to speak by coloring just portions of the stamp. Now this I'm going to lightly mist with water before I stamp it. I'll press down. And I really love the texture that this that's built into the stamp and the effect that that um, gives you when you stamp that down onto the watercolor paper. So that hot press watercolor paper is not as textured as the cold press but it still has some of that texture which translates into the image and gives it that really beautiful hand painted look. And that's one of the unique things with these stamps is that they aren't an outline stamp so you're still stamping but when you're done it looks like you really hand painted the entire image. So here I'm just blending that a little bit with some water, but not too much so my brush isn't very wet because I wanted to keep some of that texture uh, that we stamped. Now I'm going to just clean off my stamp here because it was pretty wet from being misted and I didn't want to continue to stamp that. And I used a baby wipe and then just patted it dry with a paper towel. And now I'm just adding some shading with a darker gray 
on to select portions of the base of the candle. And I use a flicking motion when I apply that onto the stamp so that it doesn't have an exact, exact line where it ends, that it's kind of a jagged end to it. And I like to start light and not too, by light I mean not covering too much of the area on the stamp. I can always go back and add more but it's hard to take it away so I'm just adding a little bit here and there and I can repeatedly stamp it in the same place to darken up the color and because I'm not misting it I am working in just small sections of the stamp so that I can turn it over and stamp it before that ink has a time to dry so on the candle I'm starting with a light purple and then you'll see here that I go back several times and add different shading to that and here blending that ink with my paintbrush and water. And also picking up some of that purple and you'll see later in the video and sort of applying it throughout the image so that it all ties together. So here I'm even doing that, putting some purple down here on the base of the candle and then stamping that down. And you'll see me stamping this several times. Um, and this is because this is the first time I'm making this card and I wasn't sure how much purple I wanted down below. So I started with just a little bit and then I added more because I like the look of it. Here I'm adding that darker purple for some additional dimension at the top. It's so fun to work with these brushstroke stamps and, and using the MISTI. It opens up just a whole new realm of possibilities. It makes it so easy. Um, if, you, if you don't like painting, but you really want the look of watercolor on a card, this is the way to go. It's just really fun, and you will just really enjoy the process. So I just finished out the stamping here. Um, adding a little bit more down there to the berries to tie into the color of the flame on the candle. So now I've removed that from my misty, and I just wanted to pull a little bit more of that purple down here into the base of the candle. But to do that, I just colored with my marker onto an acrylic block, and I'm adding some water to that so that it's just a very light layer. And you can just really blend that out using water. And I'm adding quite a few layers of paint to this, but you really wouldn't have to add all these layers of paint. It's up to you, and you can go as simple or as elaborate as you like. I love to color, so sometimes I never know when to stop. But if you like it um, with less shading or if you're making multiple Christmas cards, you wouldn't have to add this many layers and it would still look beautiful. I'm also going to add some paint to the background. So again, I've colored with that marker onto the acrylic block just to create a palette. I'm putting down just water first, then picking up the paint and putting it in the area that I added the water. And I'm just working in small sections on the background. And by adding the water first, it just helps that to blend naturally into the background and to fade from darker color to a lighter color. So again, just putting down the water first and then sort of pouncing that color on my brush closest to the stamped image and then blending out with just water as it moves away. So I used green here at the base of the candle And then I'm going to use some yellow up at the top. For the glow of the light of the candle. And then to ground that image, I'll use just a little bit of brown along the bottom.
going darker closest to the image. And I also added just a little bit of yellow to that to contrast with the purple that is a part of the base and the candle. So you can kind of mix your colors while everything is still wet on the page. And I'm adding a little bit more green. Watercolors tend to dry lighter, so sometimes I need to go back and just darken things up a little bit. And then I love the look of Distress Inks on top of a watercolored background, so I'm just doing that here. I'm using some vintage photo, and I'm applying that with an ink blending tool and a foam pad, focusing mainly on the bottom right-hand corner. Next I'm going to add some light background stamping, and I'm using Penny Black Stamp called Footnotes, one I reach for all the time to add just a little bit of text to the card. And I'm inking that with Memento Espresso Truffle Ink, putting the ink on and then pulling some up, randomly dabbing it with a baby wipe before I stamp. And I also did some second generation stamping there where I stamped without re-inking the stamp. Just to brighten up that green a little bit, I've got some crushed olive distress ink and I'm lightly applying that to the green areas on top of where I watercolored. And I stamped my sentiment using VersaFine ink in the color of onyx green. And up here is just a touch of wild honey distress ink. Here's a look at the final card. I had so much fun creating this using the Misty and Penny Black brushstroke stamp. And another little peek here at some of that fun detail and shading on the candle. Thanks so much for watching. If you enjoyed today's video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel. You can also connect with Penny Black on Facebook, Pinterest, Twitter, and our website. And I'll link all of those for you down in the description box below here on YouTube. I'll also link all the ways you can connect with My Sweet Petunia, the makers of the Misty. And here's a list of the supplies used in creating this card.